Hey y'all, welcome back to the Hack Shack. On today's episode, we're gonna be talking about how I made that happen every time we got a donation during our Extra Life fundraiser. Stay tuned. So I already had this payphone that I had been messing with for a little while, which is another project that's not finished, but um, I had this and the SIP adapter, this Handy Tone 286, so I thought I'd have the pieces I would need as far as making the phone ring. Now, what I didn't have was a way to just kind of trigger a ring. I, um, I played around with some SIP clients uh, calling this payphone internally in my home network, and that was fine. But I was just looking for something that I could integrate into a script that would just, um, you know, let a back end uh, command run to ring the phone. And that's where I found this SIP P software that I've got up here on, uh, showing from GitHub. So what I did, I downloaded this and uh, compiled it and went through a bunch of different stuff, tried to look at the docs, and I came up with this command line that you see on the screen as a way to just like on the fly behind the scenes be an easy command to run to make the phone ring for a second. And that's actually what was executed when uh, I made the phone ring in the intro to this video. So now that I've figured out how I could make the phone ring, I just needed to figure out how to get the data to act on to trigger the phone to ring. Now, based on my previous year, uh, year's experience with Extra Life, I knew that there were um, ways to get to the data. Initially, things had to use screen scraping, such as what I'm scrolling through here. This guy, Bread, um, he uh, initially had a way to screen scrape to get data you could use for an overlay for your stream, which was really cool, to show the amount of money raised and uh, any kind of other stuff, like you can see me scrolling around here. But I think in more recent years, um, this company called Donor Drive, which actually handles the back end, for the fundraising for Extra Life, they actually released an API. And of course, once that was made available, it made it a lot easier to get to the data. So I looked that up on, I found their GitHub for the documentation for that, and uh, basically looked at one of their how-tos, and one of the real basic ones just shows you how to, you know, I'm essentially tagging on everybody when you make an account, you get like a like an ID, I guess. and. Uh, there's just a real basic one I'll show here and it just spits back some pretty good information and one of those values is the number of um, donations received. This value is the one I wanted to focus on. The idea was to poll for the number, store it, and then subsequent polls would see if it changed or not and if it had to ring the payphone. So back to the whole chunk of data. Um, this is being returned in a, a JSON type format. And so I was trying to figure out now a way to extract that data out. So I was gonna be able to use curl on the command line to make the call. And then out of all that data I got back, I just wanted to extract the, that uh, num of donations value. And uh, you know, like everybody else would, unless you're a guru, I, I Googled around and um, I came upon a stack overflow link which you know how that goes sometimes but anyway uh, one of the top requests or top answers to the similar question was not to do it i was going to try to do it with set or awk or something but uh, one of the top answers was just to use this utility called jq and um, it's actually pretty cool um, when you run it with no arguments with just piping the output of the curl line into it with no arguments to jq itself like as you look here you'll see it returns a nicely formatted uh uh, you know something that's a little bit easier to look at with your eyes and then with um, further tweaking you can get it to just return the one value you're looking for at this point in my mind the hard work was was done um, I just really needed these two pieces um, a way to get the value out easily that I could compare with and then a way to ring the phone so I'm just gonna get right into the bash file that uh, I am, I'm ended up going with here. So uh, I am no expert or anything like that by any stretch of the imagination, but and I'm sure I may, I may have made something that some uh, one of those actually guys could uh, tear me up on, but here we go. So on this first line, we're just uh, filling the variable result with the output of our trim down JSON output when we pull the API. So if we did that right now, the result would equal 19. 
on our second line, we are setting the variable named previous to the value that is within that file. So basically, whatever is in that file, and we set that later in the program. So basically, we use that value to compare against the value that we just pulled to see if there's a difference or not. And that's the operation you can see happening on this third line here. Difference equals result minus previous. Now the next line is where we begin some uh, logic. Basically, uh, if result equals previous, it means nothing has changed. And so basically, echo strings are equal and, and quit out, nothing's going to happen. Now, if our strings are not equal, and in this case, we are making a, an assumption that it's greater. The one you just pulled is greater than the one you have from previous. We do the, uh, we, we put that value from that subtraction operation uh, into the value of i. And then we're going to start a loop here where, if, you know, as long as i is greater than or equal to uh, 1 minus minus. So we're just going to step through that until we run out of values there. So that's the number of times that we're going to make the phone ring. So if we got three donations in between uh, the last time and the current polling, then we're going to go through each one of those and make the phone ring once, sleep for one, and do it again. So we bring the phone three times, and then we're done. So you may be able to have observed that this is uh, running on a Raspberry Pi, and it's running every minute. That's the cron tab line there where this runs from. It's running from a Pi because this is a little system that's always online. It handles some other tasks here at the house. So that's why we put it on there because, uh, you know, desktops go to sleep, have problems, crash and uh, turn off, that kind of thing. Um, so I figured this is the best place to have it running from so it's always up and polling. So as far as improvements go, I can think of several that I would like to make. Um, the uh, There's just some stuff left over, like most scripts probably, from hacking around at things and testing them out. Um, instead of just comparing if the values were different, I would probably um, make sure to say um, if it's, you know, I want it to be greater than. I would just kind of flip this logic around a little bit. So like the, the uh, it'd be like if result is greater than previous then and I'd put all that stuff that's in that after the else for that and then the else would be the thing that just dumps out of the program or script rather another hypothetical situation which seems highly unlikely and I would love to have this problem to solve for would be as if um, for some reason within a polling cycle that got so many donations that the loop couldn't finish before the cron was called again and then it'd be like a race type condition thing you know like if this script wasn't through ringing all the times before cron kicked it off another time that could be something I'd um, just a hacky way to deal with that I would think would be to check for the presence of a uh, run file at the top of the at the script basically and if it's uh, not there you proceed if you do see the file there then you exit out and then right after you do that check would be when you touch or write that file. So basically when you start yourself up, you touch the file. So if you get try if a uh, cron tries to come and run again, it won't run that. It won't execute the script until it's finished. And then, you know, at the end of the file, after you've looped through all the times you need to, to ring the phone, you would clean that file up. So it'd be ready to go again. All right. So I'm going to try to, uh, show this was working i mean you could say that i'm uh <laughs> making up making it up because i can obviously run a script and uh do it but just gotta take my word so i'm gonna hopefully this mic will pick up the phone ring and it'll be pretty low probably in the background because of the type of mic this is but uh i'm gonna donate a dollar and uh depending on what part of the cycle the cron job is in will vary and how long it'll make the take the phone to ring so we will uh, give it a shot now so I'm going to go here and I'm going to say donate an amount of my choice and one time and I'm just going to do one dollar here and uh, feel free to uh, donate if you're to this particular uh, participant ID if you'd like before the end of uh, um, 
this year. It'll go towards this particular thing. And uh, we are uh, supporting Norton Children's Hospital in Louisville, Kentucky. Or, you know, uh, find somebody that's uh, doing extra life for a uh, uh, children's hospital in your neck of the woods. It's a, it's a great organization. And uh, who doesn't like helping kids, right? All right, so let's go to uh, PayPal. And uh, let's see here. I may or may not be blanking the screen at some pieces here. But uh, I will try to keep some parts of the screen going. So I'm going to hit pay now. I'm clicking that right now. I don't think I'm showing anything weird. And let's see if we hear the phone ring. Let's wait. Suspense is killing me. Come on. Come on. Oh man, this thing's gonna make me a liar. Hey, when I go to look, it does it. I was about to go and see if the value changed. So you can look at the command line here. This was not the command to make it ring. Uh, I just, you know, we must have hit right at the beginning of the polling cycle. So, uh, yeah, there you go. So it does work. No uh, hijinks on my part. If you made it this far, wow, you are, you're awesome. And uh, thanks a lot. Take care and bye-bye.